I ask them, I was like, is that the best? Is that the best you got? Are you giving me the best that you have? And if they say, yeah, and I know it's not, then I'll just look at them and I just, then I just that's kind of go back to them like, but I think you're better than that. I believe in you more than that. And I want you to have that same belief in yourself. So don't lower that standard and say like, yeah, that's the best I got. Well, I'm telling you, I, I feel like I believe in you more than that. And I know you're capable of more. I know God's given you gifts that are allowing you to do more than that. So I want you to explore those for me. Welcome to the Built to Last podcast, a community for coaches founded on the principles encourage, equip, and empower. We are performance coaches working for eternal purpose. Now, here are your co-hosts, Charlie Ray and Justin Ventavania. Hey guys, welcome back to the Built to Last podcast. We, uh, we want to welcome you, whether it's your first time here or you're someone who's been listening to the show for a while now. Thank you for taking the time to listen to the show. We do not take it lightly to have your time. And so we are constantly motivated to, to take this show to the next level and to give you the absolute best product possible. And so we have some big vision for 2022. We're excited with where this show is going and what we're doing with the ministry. And uh, as we prayerfully seek God through that, um, we're just excited to share some of those updates with you. You know, full disclosure, guys, um, this introduction is going to go a little bit longer than what we would typically do. I know for me personally, when I'm listening to a podcast, one of my biggest pet peeves is when uh, the introduction goes a little bit too long. And so I will usually just end up fast forwarding it and getting into the show. And so if you guys want to fast forward, that's perfectly fine. Um, we have an awesome episode with Coach Wolf ahead of you guys. But if you are someone who's been listening to the show for a while, or someone who knows uh, us personally, maybe you'd be interested in these things. So we just want to take the time to, to share with you guys some vision that we have for 2022 and, um, and to walk through some transitions that we've, we've made in our lives professionally that you guys might be interested in hearing about. And so just to start off with my co-host, Charlie Ray. Charlie has been the head strength and conditioning coach at Houston Baptist University for a while now. And um, through his wife, Sarah, giving birth to two healthy beautiful twins um, that we're so excited about. Um, Charlie, through that process, has decided that it was best to make the transition to um, the high school setting at Landmark Christian School in Georgia. And we're really excited for him in that. And he's been loving it. He's been learning a lot and doing some really cool things there. And um, what we're going to do is, you know, me and Charlie, were talking about this. We're going to actually do another episode that will be released to you guys right after this one. So within the next couple of weeks, definitely be on the lookout for that, um, where I'm going to interview Charlie and talk about his transition and some of the things that he's learned in that process. And um, he's got a pretty big announcement for you guys on top of, of that one. Um, and so definitely stay tuned for that. An update uh, in my life, um, I've actually made a transition as well. And so after the past four and a half years at Hofstra University, which has been an incredible, fulfilling, um, life-changing experience for me, um, I felt God was leading me to, to take a step in another direction and transition into the tactical space. And so uh, I accepted a position. And for the past month now, I've been getting started uh, in a new role, working with the military uh, as a strength and conditioning coach. And that's been awesome. Uh, so uh, if you guys want to learn more about that, feel free to, to uh, shoot me a text or um, send me an email. And I'd love to talk to you about that. Um, and then Andrew Slay, who, if you haven't seen uh, Andrew's articles, Andrew has been someone writing incredible articles for us on our website that I highly encourage you guys to check out. Andrew has made a transition as well as he was formerly the head strength and conditioning coach at Lee University in Tennessee. He has made a transition into full-time ministry as an assistant pastor at Westwood Baptist Church where he's working with students and families. And so um, in regards to Andrew's transition, you know, he is such a huge resource for us here at Built to Last you know, Andrew's been to seminary. He's been in the strength game for a while now. And what we wanted to do in terms of vision for 2022 with Built to Last is we said, you know, we have truly enjoyed the interviewing side of the ministry where we've been interviewing a ton of coaches, giving them a platform. And we want to continue to do that to help you guys learn and grow from people who are doing it. Um, behind the scenes, we've been talking about also adding in a component of this ministry where we dive deeper into the word of God and what an awesome resource we have in Andrew, who is just such a wealth of knowledge, who's, 
who what we said is what we're going to do is do quarterly episodes with Andrew. So four episodes this year where Andrew comes on and he's going to talk to us and go deeper in the word on some key topics of what it means to be a believer uh, and how we can make an impact on the faith side of things um, and dive through diving into scripture. And so Andrew's going to break down some key things for us in terms of what does it mean to be saved? What is the gospel? How do we share it effectively and things like that? So I'm really just personally, I'm really excited to hear from Andrew on those shows and um, I hope you guys enjoy them as well. So um, that's about it in terms of all our updates and announcements. Sorry guys, if that was a little long winded, but we just wanted to get that to you. And so um, without further ado, um, I'm excited to introduce you guys to coach Dustin Wolf. He is the head strength and conditioning coach at Wesleyan School in Peachtree Corners, Georgia. We think you guys are going to love this episode. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Coach Wolf, we cannot thank you enough for coming on the show. Appreciate you hopping on with us. No problem. I'm excited about it. So first question for you, Coach, for any listeners who don't know uh, who you are or about your background, would you mind just going into a little bit of how you got into the field of strength and conditioning? Uh, yeah, I think my story is just a slight bit different than, than many other coaches, but I uh, got my undergraduate degree in athletic training, um, and as soon as I was finishing that up, I realized pretty quickly that that is not the career path I wanted to go with, um, and that I want to be more on the preventative side of things. So I went ahead and got my master's degree in exercise science and biomechanics, but when doing that, um, I didn't go the normal GA route. I actually joined a company, a private company uh, in East Tennessee, because I went to the University of Tennessee for my grad school, who I think was one of the more... I think this is early on, this is 2000, 2001. So there wasn't a lot of movement-based companies that were draining athletes at the time. Um, so I got a lot of experience um, early on there with you know, younger athletes. I was actually training some of the teams, uh, collegiate athletes at Tennessee, um, East Tennessee. Um, so from there, um, as I've completed my grad school, I was looking for a new opportunity. And it came up that uh, a facility here in Georgia, Swanee, Georgia, was looking to, um, they just got a new ownership and they wanted, instead of being more of an event model for basketball and volleyball, they wanted to actually be more of a training model. So I was to come in and do all the physical development for them. Um, I also took on the challenge of starting that company up in 2004 here in Georgia, and then taking off and going to Korea and training a professional basketball team for a season. Um, did that, got international experience, invaluable of just life things to do with that. And then uh, came back and ran the company, um, built contracts and clients like Wesley as a client. I was with the WNBA for eight years as a client. Um, so again, it was just experience of doing all kinds of populations. Um, learn how to lead, have other coaches underneath me. Obviously, I can't be in all those places at one at one time. So had multiple coaches underneath me as a staff. Um, and then you know, life took its turns. And, and that's kind of where we'll get to some of my faith testimony of how I became full-time at Wesleyan and been full-time with them for the last uh, seven years, eight years now. And real quick on that, Coach, there's a lot to dive into, but one of the things you mentioned was about coaching internationally, and I've seen more and more positions opening. I don't know about you, Charlie, um, but like there's so many positions now that are international positions in strength and conditioning, which is awesome, um, and the field is really growing. And for any coaches who are listening to the show who are maybe considering uh, going abroad and doing something when coaching overseas, uh, what I know you mentioned some life lessons were learned there. Like, Do you mind just, Coach, diving into that a little bit? Um, I think it's got to be right for you as an individual. I mean, it takes a lot of courage to know that you're going to go, you know, I went to Korea, did not speak Korean, didn't know a person that I was going to go over there <laughs> at all. Um, so, you know, you got to have, uh, you know, some courage and some faith that you're going to go over there and, and be isolated because isolation is, is challenging for a lot of people. Um, you know, so those are things that kind of test you to your core. Um, can you handle that? Those kind of situations. And if it's not for you, um, you know, trust me, it's not for everybody to go to go to those kinds of things. But, you know, you are going to experience uh, things that are not normal. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, Coach, and uh, it's really cool to hear your your different experiences at all these different places. And uh, I would love to hear 
um, how your coaching philosophy has changed as you've kind of developed and grown. I mean, you do come from a unique experience where it's athletic training background, then you quickly went more into private sector and you had clients and then all of a sudden you're in high school setting. So yeah. I would love to hear what your coaching philosophy is and, you know, just a real quick summary of it. And then how has it changed and adapted? All right. So, so it does come initially from an athletic training standpoint of, of making sure that I'm doing everything that I possibly can to protect our athletes, to prepare them for the stresses that they, that they're going to incur you know, whether it be in the weight room that I'm doing everything I can to make sure that they're doing the lifts correctly. They're at the, the, uh, the load and expectation is appropriate for the individual. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, once I've got that kind of established, then I'm going to try to get them to be stronger and progress them to be more explosive, more powerful. And then at the end, probably the most important thing overall is, you know, I want them to enjoy the, the process. You know, I want them to, uh, the way we, a lot of coaches have taken this from one of my mentors, but it's it's the end is to thrive, and I want them to thrive in what they're doing, but I want them to enjoy it as, as well. How has it changed over the years? I think I've just been more intentional about it. You know, I've as I've grown, as I've learned, um, you know, I've found more strategies and ways to make sure that I'm meeting the athlete where they are, where they need to be, what I need to challenge them with. Um, it's not a one fit all program. Um, they're going to do it in a very similar fashion with a similar structure, but it may be very unique um, on each individual. And from a high school setting, that's that's going to be challenging because we're going to be in a setting where I can have 60 in the room with freshmen uh, in there that are very novice with seniors in there that are pretending to go I mean, are challenging to go play at the next level. So um, you've got to do a lot of the legwork on the front end. You got to do a lot of the communication to make sure that you're getting that process to happen or you know, you're not doing your number one, you're not preparing them or protecting them. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting, though, that that word thrive that I picked up from you. Could you say more about that specifically? Well, you want them to have success, you want them to succeed in the way you want them to succeed in, in their competitions, but you want them to appreciate and enjoy the process from start to finish. Yeah. And that's where I think thriving comes from. It's like, you don't want any part of it to be where it's like, you know, I don't want to say grind, but something that they feel like they have to do, or it's almost punishment that I got to do conditioning and those kind of things. It's, it's, and I think it's how you set it up a little bit. It's how you set the tone. It's how you create the environment to where, you know, man, I have the best day, but somebody beside me is lifting me up and we're doing it in strategically in ways where we're creating competitions to where I'm getting the goal accomplished of, of, of uh, conditioning, but they're also enjoying it as far as competing and not just training yeah. because they're here, they're there to play a sport and it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And the training part of it is just a piece of it that we know is teaching them valuable character lessons, but same time, you know, we want, we don't want to take away from the fun and the enjoyment that they're supposed to be getting out of it. Yeah. That, I always find that a challenge is to, you, to make the weight room an environment where it's fun, it's competitive. Hey, we get after, we train hard, but when you can truly create that, that environment of a structure, but yet it's fun and it's, it's dynamic and you create that culture of, of buy-in and it really does. I mean, think about the athletes. They don't come there to lift weights. They come there to play the sport or they're trying to grow. I mean, even in high school, they're younger athletes. So they're like, they want to have fun. They're kids in a way, everybody, you know, athletes think about sport. It was a leisure thing and we've taken it throughout all these years and become so serious with it. And so I think that's a huge thing I'm hearing you say is, create the environment for them to thrive, not only with it being fun and competitive, but also thriving with the character development that you're kind of mm -hmm. talking about. Yeah, big time. Yeah, you're, you're definitely, you know, challenging them with ways to, you know, and it's got to be intentional, but you're trying to create strong core values in them through that. Um, and it's not just fun and games. It's not recess. You know, we've got to plan a purpose. Um, to support each other in what we're doing. You know, if, if I'm not training hard, am I actually truly supporting my teammate beside me? Yeah. Or am I doing them a disservice and, and, and actually not, you know, helping them out or lifting them up? So, you know, I kind of constantly push that in their head a little bit. And hopefully some of that sinks in that, you know, it's, it's not, you know, we'll, we'll talk about this maybe later on, but it's not always about me. It's definitely about the guy beside me much more. Mm -hmm. 
You know, one of the things that we usually cover towards the end of the show are the lessons learned and just the bigger takeaways. But coach, I know that for you, you've had such a, um, a diverse career across so many different uh, platforms with so many different people, um, just lessons learned. I'm sure there's just so many of them. And I do want to make sure that we can get to all of them. Um, just real quick, would you mind just sharing some of the biggest lessons that you've learned um, like at each step of your journey? I know you covered, you spoke earlier on going overseas and you spoke about um, being with the WNBA and I'm sure there's so many lessons from different places. Would you mind just covering like some of like the major ones so we don't miss any? Well, honestly, I think it comes down to one really big one. And, you know, for me, I guess, you know, it goes back to your own human nature is I'm a people pleaser by nature. I want to do my very best to help and support. Um, but not everybody thinks that way. In the fact, what I'm, I guess, trying to get at is saying that, I didn't put enough priority on building relationships with the individuals. I, I looked at it more of, you know, more like transactional. If I say something to do it because it's, I'm telling you because I know it's gonna be the best for you, but I should expect you to do it. And, you know, and I, I know you guys have all heard this, but they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I didn't put enough emphasis maybe on that of, you know, building a relationship first. And that's, that's, that's hard sometimes, you know, we know the environment is, you can't just go and individually have all these conversations, these hard hearts, but, you know, making that intentional. And then when you have that, then you can really kind of push them or, or have conversations that are going to be meaningful. Um, and it doesn't matter what level it is, you know? Yeah. In Korea, that's going to be really challenging, but I think they could tell, they could tell my intent and purpose and passion was how I came with energy the plan, the action, it was through, it was through my actions. And that's all I could have. You know, I had to show everything that I wanted to build a relationship with them. And I, and I honestly thought I felt a, I built a pretty good one in the short time that I had with guys that I really couldn't communicate with, but I did it in a completely nonverbal way. Um, so, I mean, to me, no matter what level, no matter what environment, if that's number one, that you know that you got to try to be relational. Um, and therefore then you ultimately can be like, transformational and not just transactional. And that's, I mean, the whole concept of built to last, right? Building our athletes, building yeah. our families, building, building people around us to last for eternity. And this profession, I'm blown away time and time again of how many awesome coaches we have in the field yeah. who are really <laughs> trying to do that. And yeah. remember when we first started this show, me and Charlie were saying like, are we going to be able to find enough people to be on it? Like how many yeah. believers are in the field? And now we have, you know, like at this point, we have like four shows in the queue. We haven't even released yet. We have so many people on a list we want to get to. And uh, people like yourself, Coach Wolf, it's just so encouraging to hear how many strength coaches are out there that care almost sometimes more about the relationship side of things actually then the X's and O's of programming and all these different things. And so uh, of all the things you could have mentioned, it's pretty cool uh, to hear you say something like that. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. If you're doing it for the right purpose, you know, you can have all the information in the world um, and it's not going to really help them out, but if you're doing it for the right reasons, you're doing it there to, to lift them up, to make them better. Um, and honestly, you're, you're trying to make them, like I said, what, what percent is actually going to do sport for their career in life? You know, you're hopefully building them up to make them, uh, you know, better husbands, better, better wives, better, you know, hopefully at the time right now, better sons and daughters, you know, cause they have, a, they have a different voice speaking truth into them. Um, you know, I tell them all the time, I was like, I'm here to help you make, make you a better, uh, employee or an employer, you know, and then those are the things that I want you to take from here. Not what you bench today. And you can look back at that as the greatest accomplishment that you've had in life. Yeah. That's so, that's so funny, Justin, that you were mentioning that I was thinking the same thing with built to last. Like it's the idea of building lasting relationships. It's, it's building lasting influence on our athletes so that they can then turn around and influence others when they're fathers and mothers and things like that one day and, and workers uh, and, and ultimately building that lasting relationship with Christ. And so that's, that's my next question for you, coach Wolf is, Tell us a little bit about your faith story and then how you kind of use this platform of strength and conditioning as a opportunity for ministry. Okay. Um, so early on when I was younger, my family went to church and then it kind of faded away. So I knew who Christ was. I knew that he had died for me, um, but we didn't have that relationship. Um, and I know 
a, a specific moment in time because I had my identity was an, as an athlete and that's how what I identify was it wasn't a Christian I was identified as an athlete yeah and I know God um mm -hmm. through injury took that away from me to draw me closer to him and wow um so when I tore my ACL my senior year in high school you know I didn't didn't get to play anymore in sports with all the guys that I played with forever but instead of and then you know playing in college was also going to be in question but I also, instead of being, you know, sad and remorseful that I was like, oh, this is taken away from me, mm -hmm. I honestly was grateful. And one of the coaches actually today just sent me this, this verse, this first Th Thessalonians 518, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And that's exactly what I, what I took from that. It was like, he took that away from me to draw me closer to him. Yeah. And he Amen. guided my path a step closer to what he wanted me to do in, in, in turn. And that was, you know, to kind of get into the field of athletic training and to get in the field of strength conditioning um, and to have more opportunities. So that was just one pivotal moment where I knew that if I followed him and I get put my trust and faith in him, that he was going to always guide my path closer to him. And so, um, He's done that in multiple, multiple phases um, in my professional career. Um, when I made the decision to break away from the private company and go to Wesleyan full time, that was an extremely difficult choice for me because innately I have a, a high sense of loyalty. I, you know, I always feel like if I ever have to say I can't do something for somebody um, that tears me up. Like I'm always mm -hmm. like, you know, I'll stay, I'll stay, I'll stay. I got this, you know, like whether it be friendships, my marriage, you know, we're going to be there. So when I said I had to step away from that company, and that was a really hard decision because I know my boss um, had visions of me taking over and yeah. running for her. And that's her lasting legacy at the time. But what I have faith in is that he knew that in that career, he wasn't an everyday presence. Mm -hmm. he wasn't something that we we our main focus and at Wesleyan that's our main focus that we're Christ-centered first and foremost and it's something that we talk about openly we we're surrounded by it and that's yeah. your community and so I knew that decision where as hard as it was for me that was me getting in the way and when I released that and let him guide my path and said, all right, you know, and I prayed on it hard and I knew in my heart, that's where he wanted me to be. Once I made that decision, it was clear and evident that, that, that that's where it needed to go. I needed to be guided by him and go to Wesleyan to where he was more of an everyday presence, primarily because that's when we're about to start our family. Mm -hmm. And I was just about to have my daughter and I needed to be in an environment where I was being nurtured and, and trained to be a better leader um, that's centered around Christ for my own family, for my household. Um, and I needed to surround my, my, myself with that. And that's kind of how Iron Circle is for me as well, is that, you know, I've got my Christian community around me at work every day, and that's my professional environment. But I also choose to be in that, that small group with these other strength coaches that, that walk a similar path with me professionally. But we do we kind of do life together as well. Um, and Coach, we for those who aren't aware of Iron Circle, can you talk about that a little bit and just like what you're involved in and, and mm -hmm. just what that's mm -hmm. been like? Okay, so Iron Circle is a, and I, I can't say it's a high school because it's a strength conditioning Bible study that's led by athletes in action. Um, we meet twice a week. We've got a, an AM session and we do it, we do it, uh, on zoom, I think, um, because it's coaches all across the country. Um, you know, some of them have to wake up at four o'clock in the morning. Some, you know, if they're on different time zones and that kind of stuff. Um, but then we have a, an evening one as well. Um, if you've missed the first one, but we have different principles or different focus that athlete action sometimes leads us. Um, and sometimes it's just taking stock and praying for one another. Um, but it's been amazing. And, and again, it's one of those things where you're, having a small group of men. Um, and we have a women's one as well. There's a women's only one as well that, that is led by um, other uh, females in the strength conditioning uh, field. Um, 
so I mean, I can't speak highly more highly about it than than I think we've been going for about two years now, maybe maybe longer. I think it's two. Yeah, I remember when we did the podcast with Coach Garrett Keith. For our listeners, if you haven't heard that episode, that's a really awesome one. He goes into a lot more detail of it. Um, but the Iron Circle, I mean, I've just I've only heard great things about it. And now being in the high school sector, looking forward to trying to get plugged in to some degree. But I, I think the principle is get involved, like find yep. ways to yep. have fellowship, like the whole idea of iron, like iron sharpens iron. So one man, one woman sharpens another, like it's fellowshipping, it's getting together with people that are in the same field, we're on the same battlefield, and we're in each other's foxholes, in each other's trenches, like locking arms saying, let's go, like encouraging each other every single day. So mm -hmm. that is so cool, coach. And I really appreciate you sharing your, your testimony too. It's so cool to see a man of God look at the bigger picture and say, what can I do for my family? Our highest calling is to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then also to provide and love our family well, like more than work. And I see you in this situation. It sounds like you kind of came up to a choice that I'm going to trust God. I'm going to, even though I'm very loyal to this company, I'm going to choose the better path of honoring the Lord by trying to provide for my family. And you said, I want to surround myself with men of God. I want to get poured into to be built up and be stronger, to be empowered, to lead my family. Um, I just think that's so powerful and such a testimony of God's grace working in you. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, what you put in is what you can give out. So if I yeah. surround myself with that and I, and I, and I stay in the word and in, in prayer and, and around guys like that and girls, then I know what I can pour out to, you know, my son and daughter and my wife and, and that kind of stuff. So that's, yeah, that's, that's a big part of it. Yeah. And then specifically with being at West at Wesleyan now, what, how have you used your platform? I mean, it's a unique environment because it's a Christian school, mm -hmm. but not everybody is Christian at all, you know, by any means. And so how have you kind of used that to be an evangelist, a, you know, a minister of the gospel, just being bold and fearless for the gospel, but not shoving it down their throat. You know what I'm saying? Like not just forcing it on them, which they probably get all the time being a private Christian school. Right. You're, you're definitely right. And, and I didn't go to a uh, private Christian school at all. And, and it was kind of new to me, but the longer I was there, the more I realized that, um, you know, and it's kind of, it kind of saddens me honestly a little bit that, you know, they hear it so much, they maybe become numb to it. Mm. And yeah. where for me on the other side of it, you know, every, every chapel, everything, you know, I'm excited and dialed in and listening so intently because it's something that I crave. And that's why I get sad when it's like, you know, you've heard it so much. You've taken so many Bible classes that you feel like, you know, all the answers. And I've gone, yeah. to, I've gone to um, mission trips with kids and we, we do small groups together leading into it to connect. And I hear it over and over again that, you know, just because you go to a Christian school, doesn't mean that they're Christian. Um, and they're actually questioning it because it's almost like I'm taking a history class and they don't look at it as the word of God. I've got the answers. I can recite the verses and all that stuff. But how I do it intentionally um, using the platform of strength conditioning is um, through our character development model, um, the, the, the core values that I'm trying to teach them to be, you know, better leaders and, and better teammates and those kind of things. Um, I'm very intentional with it. So I build it around um, our 16 week uh, program and every four week cycle, I give them instead of like the one word that John Gordon said, we put, I, I, I do two because I only get them for a semester. So, and I've got eight core values that I want to, I want to speak into them. So I give them eight core values and it's very intentional. And, and part of my, in my, my lesson plans is that we'll have the word. And then I've used Ron McKeefrey's uh, weight room wisdom to then tell a little story because I think they, you know, I guess I, here's the word and I can define it and all that stuff. But I went through that book and it's, it's small, short stories from strength coaches across the country. And I'll pick a story that, that speaks right about that one word. So if it's like effort, it's going to speak around that, that thing. So hopefully they have a little, a little tale, a little story to help them remember it. And then I tie it back to scripture. And then we have a discussion where I'll have a kid actually read the story and we'll talk about it. And then we have another student read the scripture and we discuss it. And then what I say from is this going to set the tone for the next four weeks at any moment that I feel like maybe we're not, if the words effort and integrity, and that's my first one, that's my first cycle. 
two words, you know, if we're not giving great effort, I may just a quick whip about that story. Or, um, you know, if a guy's missing reps and he's just not doing, I'm like, you know, are you truly, do you truly have integrity if you're just not willing to do what you're asked to do and you're lying to yourself, you're lying to me when you sit there and say, yeah, I did it. You know, it's like, we're, we have to have a better relationship to that. If you don't have the integrity, just to be honest with me, you know, if, if it's too heavy or if you don't want to do it, let's talk about it. So that's how I intentionally do it throughout the semester. Um, other ways of how we do it is I opportunities that I know that may be challenging for my family going on freshman retreats where I'm going to go spend two or three nights in a bunk with 13 other freshman boys, you know, is that ideal? Do I really want to do those kind of things? But I know <laughs> it's a chance where maybe I can build a connection outside mm -hmm. the weight room. Maybe it's a time where we can, you know, dive into things a little deeper on a spiritual level. Um, and they look at me as someone different than just a strength coach. Um, I do find that the weight room and being the strength coach provides a very unique environment that I think that no one else I think on campus kind of really has in that, you know, we get in there, we're working out and I hear about everything. And we talk about a lot of stuff and we can really have an opportunity to build connections with kids um, that they'll open up with. It's not like you're sitting in a math class and it's like, here's the math, here's the practice problems. I mean, we're lifting, we're talking and I know what's going on in their lives. Um, sometimes more than they want me to know about them, but it also gives me a chance if I need to, to, you know, bring them in and have a one-on-one -on -one and we can, you know, talk about those life lessons that we want to do it from, you know, I'd say God, let God use me as a vessel to talk into them um, if they're, you know, need to be redirected or those kind of things, or just need to be supported. Some of them go through hard stuff. It doesn't matter. You know, our guys are well off, but you know, they still go through hard things and, and losses and stuff. And to know that I can be there because they have that kind of relationship with me because of that environment. And it's not like we're a coach of just one season and then they don't see you again for another six to eight months. You know, we're, we're with them one season to the next sport and another season. So we're kind of a constant for them, which, again, is unique. Um, so I think we have a, a special place and a, and a special opportunity. Um, and then, again, it's what we use, what we do with that. It's cool, Justin. What I hear him saying is he has like a structured approach, right? The, the, the character development program. I think that's so cool. And then you have this unstructured, organic, natural can you see them outside of the uh, the weight room? You know, can you build that connection with them? It, it's so cool seeing the dynamic play of how those work. And I feel like that's a that's a great little model to follow. If, if no one ever, if like I'm thinking about doing that with the school I'm going to, it's like how do we create some structure to be able to feed them in such a way? And it's character development. So it's, it's not like hey, this is scripture time, and I'm gonna like you know, it's it's developing character, but it's based on biblical principles. Right. And so you're kind of sneaking it in that way. And then you also just have that relationship. I just think it's so authentic. The kids recognize and, I, you know, so does everybody else as far as the administration, everything goes. But, you know, to go on mission trips and things like that, to, to sacrifice time away from family. And I got two little ones and I've been going on, you know, I don't go every year because I'm like, I'm not going to go away from every year. But, you know, multiple trips and, you know, those kids see me be the same coach, the same work effort. If I'm scraping paint off of a elementary school in, you know, where, where Dominican Republic, you know, and they see that thing, it's like, well, it doesn't matter what the environment, that's, that's who he is true to his heart. He's going to be giving and doing the best of his abilities, whether it's scraping paint or trying to get me to run, run as hard and, and be an athlete. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of stuff where it's like, to me, you're, you're sacrificing some other times to, you know, kind of go be there in way different environments to give back, to support, you know, in any way possible. Um, those, those are cool opportunities that, you know, that's why I said that I would not have had if I didn't go to Wesleyan. I wasn't here yeah. with a, with a face-based school. So, those are things that are big sacrifices that I think are important to, if you have the opportunity and chances to do jump in with both feet.
And coach, for our listeners who are listening to, to all these things and they're just wondering, all right, like their picture and their setting, okay, we come in the weight room, it's go, go, go. We're doing the warm up. we're getting into the lifts. You know, there's some time to talk in between sets. Maybe at the end, I give them a word before they leave. Um, I'm just curious, even myself, how do you, um, how do you go about the teaching with the weight room wisdom book? And how do you go about um, setting the time aside? Because if it's important, we need to set the time aside, like you said, and be intentional. Um, how do you go about structuring that in this training session? Or is that a separate time outside of the lift? So yeah, I do have a slightly different environment that I don't give huge, huge classes during the school day. So it is a little bit smaller and I can, and I can sacrifice a little bit of time. I'm not um, crammed in, but I do intentionally, even if I have to be behind a little bit, in the program. Um, I'm going to carve that out. And, you know, it, like I said, it's, it's not a long story. We introduce the word. We read that quick little story. We talk about the scripture. We have a very brief discussion and then we pop up and go. And it, all it's intent is to be the exposure. The idea is to set the tone and then we'll use the rest of the work in, in sessions to keep just driving that message home. And you have to, again, as a coach, you have to be intentional with that as well. You can't just say it one time and say like, oh, that was it, got that checked off and I'm moving on. You have to keep coming back to it and know that that's something that we're gonna come back to. Um, Cause you know, they're, they're young kids. We're talking about teenagers that are like, yep, got it. And they, and so I'm like, were you paying attention? Did you listen? What did we talk about? Um, and it may be to the whole group. It may be, you know, during the warm up. It may be one on one if I see somebody needs uh, a reminder of that kind of stuff. Um, but you know, in the summer, we don't have that kind of uh, thing. I, I, hopefully, that I've had that established uh, early on, and that I can just kind of reference back to some of my leaders to uh, help guide that path for me. And yeah, Charlie. But- yeah, go ahead, Justin. So I was going to say, off of what Coach said, it reminded me of something you taught me uh, a little while back. I think in your devotional time, you were saying that instead of reading one devotional and then just going to the next one and to the next one, it's like, oh, how many yeah. times do you do a morning devotional? And then later in the day, you forgot what you even read or yeah. just because our minds are so just short term and we forget these things sometimes, but reading the same devotional multiple days in a row. So it stays in your mind and you're not just moving on. Like Coach is saying, he's staying on these core values that he's trying to preach to his kids. And so... um I like that. Just hitting it multiple times, not just doing it once and moving on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's good. Cool. What were you going to say, Charlie? Sorry to cut you off. No, I was saying the thing about it is it's, it's consistency. Like it's like when we think about like, if you use the analogy, we're all strength coaches. So it's like, how do you build muscle? It's like, well, you have to have consistent for variety. You have to have consistent progressive overload, like all these different things. Well, how do you build your faith muscle? How do you build character development into somebody? Well, it's consistently bringing them that same message, whether it's a word or you're showing them through your actions, your actions and your in your words line up. It's like making sure that those things are all being consistent and that's walking in integrity, you know? So that's, that's kind of my takeaway of what I'm getting from what coach Wolf is saying. I'd like to transition to talking a little bit about leadership coach Wolf, if that's cool with you. Um, you were talking about like building your leaders, like saying, okay, I got to make sure my leaders know what exactly makes a good leader and how do you build leadership? Um, honestly, I think that's one of our, to me, I, I look at it as one of my biggest roles is to teach them. We use the, our school motto is joy and Jesus, others and yourself. Um, and I apply that to our weight room in a lot of ways, but, um, to be a good leader, you know, we talked about consistency. They've got to first bring it with their energy and their effort. Um, but they got to be consistent with it. Um, you can't do it one day and then the next day you're the, you're the goofball and that kind of stuff for, you know, so, uh, I kind of basically will kind of go through our core values and talk about how I'm trying to speak into them being leaders through those. So our first one is that effort that they've got to do it and you don't have to be the best athlete. You just got to bring, bring your best for that, that day. Um, and then you have to have the integrity to hold yourself to that, um, even when no one's looking. And uh, we talked to them about being consistent with it. Um, you know, you can't say it in words and then not follow it in action. Mm-hmm. And I know we've got guys, I, I see them all the time, and I was even discussing it with another coach earlier that, you know, some of your guys that are people pleasers, they may not be the most vocal. They just want to do it the right way. And then some of the guys who maybe are a little bit more vocal – aren't always your best 
physical leaders. Um, but you want to talk to them about being consistent with it. And we've got to be consistent if we're going to lead them as well. And then uh, to be humble, to know that, you know, I can let somebody else lead me as well, that I can listen and, and, and follow. I can be as, just as good of a follower as I am a leader. And it's not always my way. So I want, you know, even if it's a sophomore telling a senior to do something, he's got to humble himself and say, you know, he's right. And I don't need to give him a look and tell him, don't talk to me that way, you know? So, you know, those are some other words. And then we talk about resiliency and toughness. And even if it's, I'm not having my best day, I got stuff going on. Can I push through and still give my best or still ask the most out of the guy beside me as well, even if I'm struggling individually? Um, we talk about gratitude and that they are grateful for every opportunity because we can't get them back. Mm -hmm. They can't take that day off and ever all of a sudden get those reps back. So be grateful for it. Take the most, get the most out of it. You know, I talk to them about all the time. We're like, Hey, we only have six weeks of summer. You only have 60 minutes right now. You got to go get the most of it. Be grateful for this opportunity because you can't get it back and make the most of it. We talk about, what it means to be a good friend and that's like what it means to be a good spotter what it means to encourage him and not just walk off or you know try to coach him up to make him better to do the best that I can be so that I can support him you know in other ways you know what it means to be a good teammate so all those of our core values we talk um, regularly um, and what those mean to be a leader is that they hold themselves accountable to those kind of things. And they have the courage to speak up, to say it, to do it, to not, you know, to not let somebody else wait for somebody else to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, there's only one of me. There's 65 of you guys, you know, you've got to be my eyes, my ears and my words when I can't be there, but you have to have the courage to do it. You know, and we, we all those things that we were talking about, you can't do it sometimes and then not do it other times, you know? So all those values that we push is what I say is what I'm trying, that's what I ask out of my leaders. Hmm. And, you know, I know one of our questions was, you know, how do I end each session? Well, the session is a first, I thank them for everything they gave for that day. But I also challenge them at the end, what could we do better to help the guy how could we have encouraged somebody else besides ourselves? So, you know, I do everything that I do to glorify God with my actions and everything, but also others. What did I do to make the guy beside me better? And I ask him that almost in different ways, whether it's something very specific that I noticed that we didn't do well or something just overall that they need to ask themselves. So um, that's just a constant message coming from me. And that's why I say it's consistent. They know what they're going to get from me on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. You know, they know if they don't tie their shoes, I may blow a gasket, you know? So it's just like certain things, you know, but it, it, they're going to get the same guy almost every day, you know, high expectations, high standards. Um, I want them the best out of them, but I want them to think of others over themselves uh, pretty much all the time. If I told them, I was like, if I didn't hold you to that, that means I'm not putting you uh, to the set, to the level that I should have you up at, you know, I care for you. I want you to do, be the best that you can be. And if all of a sudden I'm not holding you to that anymore, then I'm, then I'm not doing what I said I was going to do. And that's to try to get the most out of you and, and to prepare and protect you. And that's why I said, if you ain't willing to tie your shoes and we're not prepared and we're not, I'm not protecting you. And I'm, I'm going to call you on it every time. Yeah. And just that theme of calling them out, right? Just that theme of holding them accountable to, to, to raise them up, to, to be the best they can be. That's something that all leaders are going to have to do at some point or another. And, you know, one thing that we talk even to our interns about a lot and just coaches who you know, we want to influence a little bit, you know, they're going to have to be ready to have difficult conversations. You know, as a, as a strength coach, it's unavoidable to go throughout your career and not have to address these things. And so, um, I know, coach, whenever you speak to your athletes about that, I know they, they would know it's coming from a place of love and that you care about them and want what's best for them. We can hear that in everything you're saying. And so um, what advice would you have for coaches on how to address those tough conversations to communicate these messages in a way that is not demeaning and not going to um, belittle the athlete, but in a way that communicates, I want what's best for you? Um, I think for me, uh, you know, maybe when I was younger, um, 
I would throw more fits and yell and that kind of stuff a little bit more, but I will set the tone globally across what, what I expect. And then, you know, very subtly off to the side, if I see somebody that I need to talk to, it'll be in a whisper or in a hallway of saying, and I, and I, and I basically preference it in a lot of ways of saying, you're better than that. You know, you're better than that. And I want you to hold yourself to a higher standard. You've got to want it. You know, I want it for you, but I can't do it for you. Um, so I don't, you know, I'm not really getting on to them hard, that kind of stuff. It's more of like, you know, I know you're better than that and you can do it. Um, you just got to make the choice. And if you don't want to do it, you just got to let me know. And that's fine. But I want you to have at least the integrity and the respect for me to sit there and say, coach, you know, I can't do what you're asking me to do. And then I won't ask you to do it anymore. You just told me. Um, I think also as a leader, you've got to kind of be able to, to cast a vision and inspire them for that, for that greatness. Um, and which can be challenging as a, as a strength coach, because, you know, you're not going to create or dictate playing time. You know, you're not going to be out there on the field right there with them per se, especially when you're, you know, I'm a strength coach for every sport in our, in our school. Um, but what I can control is my environment and my expectations and that kind of stuff and teach them those core values um, in every, with every sport that they're in. So if they see me, because what is unique is we're working with multi-sport athletes at college level, you know, they're there for one sport. They got one coach in staff. Well, unless it rolls over or something like that, but, uh, but we have a kid who plays, you know, say football, and then he's going to be on the basketball team. And then he's going to be on the baseball team. And, and each coaching staff has their own style and, and expectations, that kind of stuff. And I've got to try to support each one of them, but they kind of know that the one constant of what it, it is when they walk in my environment, what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's kind of important for them because, you know, I, I, there's, we can go off on all kinds of tangents on that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's great. I mean, everything you're saying is, it's tying into the leadership ties back into those core values that you spent a good amount of this episode on, which is talking about those core values and teaching them. The thing that I'm hearing you're saying is, is number one, be extremely clear with you. This is the expectation and mm -hmm. they know that. And if, if things aren't clear, like it goes back to, well, that's my fault. I'm not making it clear. And then it's saying, I liked how you said it's have enough integrity and respect for yourself and for those around you to say, am I giving my best? Like, I love how it's not, you're not demeaning them. You're not uh, yelling and screaming at them and calling them out in front of everybody, you know, and there might be a time and a place for that, but you're really, what you're saying is you're taking them and you're calling them to a higher level, a higher standard to hold themselves accountable. And you're teaching them the skill of empowerment and trying mm -hmm. to teach them to take responsibility, which they will have to do when they go to college and college age athletes have to do that when they go to the real world and young adults have to do that as they get into getting families. It's like all about learning small doses of responsibility, but you start with it and it's in a very respectful and encouraging, loving way. That's what I'm hearing from you is it's a, it comes from a heart of care. Yeah. I mean, you want to, you want to build them up and tell them, you know, that, you know, I ask them, I was like, is that the best? Is that the best you got? Are you giving me the best that you have? And if they say, yeah, and I know it's not, then I'll just look at them. And I just, then I just, that's kind of go back to them. Like, but I think you're better than that. I believe in you more than that. And I want you to have that same belief in yourself. So don't lower that standard and say like, yeah, that's the best I got. Well, I'm telling you, I, I I feel like I believe in you more than that. And I know you're capable of more. I know God's given you gifts that are allowing you to do more than that. So I want you to explore those for me. And that's just yeah. kind of how I approach it. You know, most of the time I give a look across the room and the older ones are automatically staring around like, what, who's he looking at? What's he looking at? <laughs> and let me go over there really quick and help correct. Yeah. And that's, that's a good thing because that's what I want my upperclassmen and stuff to do is that it only takes a look for me in a direction and they're wanting to go identify where that standards dropped off. And that's what I keep telling them. I was like, you guys got to hold it. You're not doing it for me. You're not doing it for those other coaches. You're honestly, we're never going to be on the field with you. We're never going to be on the court with you. 
So you got to hold each other to it because I'm, I tell them all the time also from a verbal standpoint is if you're not willing to say it in this environment, if you're not willing to, you know, hold them accountable, or you're not willing to push them or instruct them. And then all of a sudden in the game, you go off and, you know, want to inspire them. They've never heard that voice from you before and it's never going to resonate with them. But if they've heard that voice a bunch and they know to respond to you in the right way, in the critical situations in the game, when you speak out, they will respond in the way you want, but you've got to have, they've got to hear it on a regular basis. And that's, that's what I try to get my guys to learn. And it, you know, it's, it, hopefully it takes, you know, I say, hopefully it takes a couple of years. Yeah. Um, they've got to kind of almost be empowered to do it. Um, that's why like, even this year I, I'm learning steps where if you want them to be leaders, you got to put them in positions to lead. Amen. Yeah. And then you got to put them in positions on a consistent basis, on a regular basis. And it could be something like for us right now, it's leading the warm up. I don't lead the warm up anymore. I call out an individual and say on so-and-so I blow the whistle. They lead the whole thing. And I tell them, I was like, you got to do it with the right tone to set it, you know, and it's got to be executed in a certain way. And then I like somebody else, you're, you're going to lead the mobility sequence. Boom. You got to do it. And they, you know, early on, they were a little resistant to it because they're not used to having to call out everything and, and, learn exactly every detail in which I want it. They know how to follow it, but they don't know how to lead it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to find intentional ways of giving them out the opportunity to lead and let their teammates hear their voice and not just my voice. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that I'm trying to find other ways to where I could have them do it um, and not be a distraction. You know, they're not going to be perfect at first. And that's with anything yeah. that I do to them. And I've got to be patient because, you know, what, what can I do immediately? I can go take over again. Yeah. Be me leading and they can be perfect. But I've got to step back a little bit and say, all right, if I let them do it, there may be a few mistakes or we just start over. And are we killing a little bit of our workout time? Yeah. And that's okay. You know, yeah. but I know my end all goal is that I'm empowering them to have a voice and to practice it. Mm. It's, it's repetition. Yeah. Um, some are better than others, but I don't, you know, I can keep going back to the ones that are good at it, but I don't. And when the ones struggle, they struggle really bad. I may, but then I'll come over to them. I'm like, I'm going to give you another opportunity tomorrow. If you need to practice with it, let's go practice. But I expect you to lead and I expect it to be done at the intensity to set the tone for us to start a session. Yeah. And so we, we've been working that this summer and I even do it with the girls now too. Yeah, I started doing it with the girls. I'm like, give me a senior in the cheerleading squad. You got to do it, and they're kind of looking at me like, what? <laughs> but they're stepping up, and you know, I'm giving them the opportunity, and they're stepping up to it. Um, some days it's better than others, but honestly, to me, it's it's been a very good thing, and and that's why I've tried to encourage some of our other coaches. Is like, if we want them to lead, we've got to be intentional about finding opportunity for yeah. them in the sport, in my environment, you know, constantly, and and maybe even in the classroom in different ways. I've yeah. got to find ways of, you know, having a kid. I may say, you know, next cycle, we're going to be talking about, you know, uh, consistency and humility. I want you to find scripture and I want you to lead it, you know, versus me just give it to them and let them read it. But just yeah. I'm, I'm, right now, I'm thinking off the top of my head of being intentional, finding ways for them to be more involved and not spoken to, but let them, you know, find their voice a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. What I hear is small doses of responsibility. And I love that because one of the most frustrating things is when the, the sport coach, you're having all these conversations that are like, oh, we just need more leaders. We need leaders, this leaders, that. And it's like, well, are you putting them in positions to lead and not only lead, but fail and then let them learn and let them refine their leadership and let them learn how to do it better. And by doing that, you're giving them opportunities to take responsibility and giving them specific feedback. Like it's one thing to let them lead. It's something else to watch them, give them feedback and then let them do it again later. And they've improved their leadership. So I just think that's a very powerful, powerful way to do it. Well, coach, we usually finish the, um, the episodes with going our, our three fast finishers and uh, we call them our fast finishers. So just, I'm gonna go ahead and just go ahead and go right into this. It's your favorite book, favorite Bible verse or story and then how do you define success so that first one once again is what's your favorite book uh one of the ones i like and we have to host a book or um summer reading we have to sponsor a book 
And one I liked was Lead for God's Sake by uh, Todd Godwin, or Godward. Um, I love because, that book. Just, just simply because it's it's like a, a story where you're actually just following it and you're like, you're like getting in with the characters. Um, but it's speaking a lot of truth to you. Um, mm -hmm. along the way and I think it's easy for the kids to read um, they can stay engaged with it it's talking about you know a coach coaching high school basketball and a, and a janitor and those kind of things so I like that one a ton just because of the simplicity of the read um, but and it's and it's the end all message um, as far as my favorite uh, verse it's, it's on my weight room wall Joshua 1 9 um, you know that one in, environments you know if I've got to go speak at a presentation or do things that I really don't feel comfortable doing. I just know that I can go do it. I can have the courage. I can have the strength to go do those kind of things. Um, because I know my Lord, my God is with me always. Mm. And, and, and yeah. that's where, that's where at the end of the day, everything's going to rest. You know, I, I can fail miserably, but I didn't fail in his eyes and mm -hmm. you know, I'm still as his son. Um, so I love that one. And I wrote down how I define success. Um, honestly, it's when I have student athletes come back and want to see me years after they've graduated, because then I know that I have built that rela relationship, um, that they want to come back and see time with me, um, just to stay back connected mm -hmm. to me, that success, you know, we don't wins and losses don't mean really anything to me. I want my guys to succeed. Um, but I, but I find that we can find success and sometimes our losses as well. Did we learn from it? But mm. I know I built a relationship with a kid that we're staying connected years past. Uh, I know I must be doing something right. Amen. Well, Coach, you're, you're doing a lot right, and you're dropping a lot of knowledge on us and all our listeners. We can't thank you enough for coming on the show. Um, I know, Charlie, you are the honorary uh, Built to Last prayer warrior. So do you want to pray us out of uh, this episode? Sure. Um, Coach Wolf, if, if listeners wanted to find you to connect, how, how would they reach out to you? Um, pretty much email me. Um, my email is dwolf, W-O-L-F, at wesleyanschool.org. Um, you reach out to me that way, we can connect. Uh, I give you my cell number and that kind of stuff. And uh, you can ask Charlie. Yeah. I'm, I'm willing to talk. I'm willing to do FaceTimes. I'm willing to, you know, invest in others as much as I possibly can. So by all yeah. means. Now, I appreciate that. And, and for the listeners, he's 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 uh, sincere about that. I reached out to him email. Next thing you know, we had multiple phone calls and uh, gotten to build a relationship. And I'm going to go hang out with him tomorrow, do a little site visit. So it'd be great. Well, cool. Is there anything in particular I can pray for you? You know, you said on the forum, simply a sense of peace um, and just being grateful. Is there anything else that you need prayer for besides being grateful and a sense of peace? No, nah, I mean, that's right now. I mean, I can go into people that I would want you to pray for. But right now, just for me, um, you know, peace in that I'm, I'm, I'm doing his work each and every day to the best of my abilities, whether it's right, wrong, or indifferent. Um, I'm, I'm doing my best to do his work and, uh, yeah. and be grateful for the opportunity that I have to do it. You know, it's a special thing that I should be grateful for. Amen. Let me uh, close this in prayer. Lord, we thank you so much for Coach Wolf and allowing him to be able to be on the podcast. We thank you for this ministry, this podcast um, built to last. God, I pray that it would bless many listeners, that they would um, just be encouraged in their faith. Lord, I pray that they would be equipped to go out and share the gospel, and that they would be, um, Lord, just empowered to want to make disciples. God, I pray specifically for Coach Wolf that you would continue to grant him peace that surpasses all understanding. Guard him. Um, from the lies of, of the evil one. I pray that you would protect him and put your guardian or angels around him, help him to be renewed every day in his mind by the transformation of, um, of your word, God, in his, in his heart. And I pray also for an attitude of gratitude, God, that you would allow him to be grateful for the opportunities, your grace that you've given him, Lord, to, to bring him to Wesleyan and to give him this opportunity. I pray also, Lord, that you would allow him to work hard, for your glory and your kingdom, by your spirit, by your power, um, in his job, God, and he will be a great husband, a great father to his two daughters. And I pray, Lord, that he would just be a blessing to all those that he comes in contact with, God. Uh, we thank you for um, this episode, and we just give this to you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I got a son.
Oh, and a son. <laughs> Lord, you know. One girl, one boy. I was like, Lord, I, you know. I was like, I know, I know God knows that, it, that Griffin's a boy. He but... knows, you know. <laughs> okay. I, 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 the reason I thought you, I like, you said two children. I thought you said two daughters. Okay. So I was like, Lord, my, my two, a daughter and a son, crazy. Lord. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> he knows, he knows. He knows, he knows. Thank you for listening to the Built to Last podcast, where we encourage, equip, and empower coaches to live out their core values where they live, work, and wherever they build relationships. Have a blessed day, striving to build lasting impact.